<laughs> Mine was 45. <laughs> Market control is oh, so small. Yeah, 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 I suppose it will so be. Little, yeah. And the other thing is, I mean, look at that software to find radio. Do you remember I got on the board? Yeah. You, you know the one we had up there? Yeah, I can't find it. Yeah, I think I can. I was looking for it this morning. I I Pen it. drive? Well, no, no, it was a, there was a router on there. And, uh, and it, the Raspberry Pi. I was trying to open the cupboard. I got the right number in. Do you press the button on the bottom? Yeah, you got to press the button on the bottom. Yeah. Because it wouldn't go to click. Because oh. I wonder whether someone put it away out of sight, out of mind in that moment. Well, but have you been into the cabinet? No, I couldn't. That's what I'm talking about. The oh. Up. oh, sorry, okay, yeah. Okay, we'll open that up that one. Yeah. Okay. And it may, it may well be put away. But I'm only so feeling what, I might what? have given it to Paul at one point. I'm just stuffing it out in there. So I can't get the sense. Right, hi, my, my name's Bob Stevenson and my amateur radio call sign is VK7BS. Well it is, now I'm in Tasmania, it's VK7BS. I moved from Sydney about five years ago um, and at the time I retired and I came down with the extended family, settled in Tassie and loved it, great. <laughs> I, I actually miss work. I was starting to find out what on earth could I do? Um, so I got I get kind of bored, <laughs> um, and it was my son-in-law that said, "Look, there's a there's a man shed up the road. Why don't you get up there and have a look?" So okay, I'll, sounds like a good thing. I'll, I'll come up, and it was great. I was accepted and welcomed, and it was fantastic. And so I managed to uh, get involved in a few little projects and catching some things at home, um, which was fine. But during one day I was here and I heard one of the guys saying, one of the committee guys saying, you know, it's a shame, but this shed's a bit underutilised. I wonder what we can do to have more people in here. So uh, my hobby with, uh, and part of my job was electronics. My hobby is amateur radio. So I said, how about we start off an electronics group? Uh, you know, some of the guys that haven't been involved might be interested. Um, and one of the other guys, Tom, um, is also into microcontrollers. So um, he said, well, yeah, I'll be in that. So we kicked off with electronics um, in, the, in the shed. We had a, quite a big roll up and we started basic electronic courses. The trouble was we aimed a little high. <laughs> we were filling the guys up with lots of mathematics and goodness knows what, and some of them threw their hands up. What? <laughs> I don't want to know this. I just want to know how things work. So we didn't plan that as well as we possibly could have, but um, we've since revived, re refined what we do, and we're, we're away with that again. The amateur radio, which we couldn't get people involved in to begin with, has now overtaken it. So we've got a fantastic station, and thanks to the guys, thanks to the committee, to the men's shed, they've been overwhelmingly supportive of what we're doing. Um, they're a great bunch. And so it's, it's taking off very, very well. So, and guys that, we have one guy who, who I, when I mentioned amateur radio, he said a bunch of old codgers talking to one another. Nah. <laughs> but since then, I think the, um, he referred to the, the job as, I love this RF shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us who you are. All right, I'm Joe Didocha. Um I belong to the Channel Men's Shed uh, at, here at Margate and i um, been coming here quite a few quite a few years now and I got interested in electronics at the beginning and and we progressed into um, learning about radio and um, I with the help with um, Bob Stephenson who who sort of introduced me to mainly to the radio and we had to go and um, do our um, exams if you like to get our um, foundation license and um, which we, which I did, and I got a pretty good result with that, and uh, we moved on from there, and um, now I'm enjoying the the radio here at Margate, and um, joining all the other men here talking on the radio. So it's been quite exciting, and uh, we progress from there to on Friday nights where we talk on the radio Friday nights, which is really good because um, sometimes there's up to eight people, even sometimes more, where we talk to all these different people 
and um, and we all express our our thoughts on different things we're working on or what we're doing. So it's very interesting. So um, I'm enjoying it. So I'm glad I'm part of the team. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing I'd like to just mention too is the fact that. Um, uh, originally we set up the radio just in, in one section of the room and, um, and then we decided that it wasn't adequate because we wanted to make it larger and build a bench. So we decided oh, we'll build it like a, a three metre bench and uh, mount all our cables and wiring into the wall and, and then uh, I got involved with actually making the bench actually. We did a little bit of welding to the bench and um, others were doing a bit of welding to the bench as well and we did the, and the other people here actually put the wooden bench top on and now we've got that um, all in position and um, all the cabling from the antenna and everything's all been connected through and um, and it's very comfortable now to be in a nice um, air conditioned room as well and it's exciting and um, and most of our areas are all in position, so it's very good for anybody who's interested in radio to come along and join us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Oh, so six metres possibly? Uh, yeah, okay, no, it's, it's going to yeah. carry this. So that's over there. With a train. Okay, well, my name's Larry Hauer, and uh, I'm part of the electronics group here at the Channel Men's Shed. And uh, it's been a lifelong hobby for me. I started out uh, in ham radio when I was 14, and I'll be 81 in about a month. And uh, so I've been there forever, it seems like. Um, Started out with ham radio because it was technical and then went on to uh, notice the social aspects and it became the basis of a career. Eventually I got involved in electronics. I was a radio engineer in an AM FM station and uh, eventually got a couple of patents that related to uh, electronics and uh, was in business, etc. And after working in the U.S. for many, many years, we decided to move to Tasmania. We thought Australia and Tasmania was the best place to be. So back in 2009, we moved down here and we're now citizens. And part of being sort of retired is joining and benefiting from the social aspects of the Channel Men's Shed. And they had a ham club started up by, by Bob Stephenson and that sounded good. So here I am at uh, 81 plus and uh, enjoying the social aspects of ham radio with a whole bunch of good guys down here in Margate. So uh, yeah, it's been very good. I'm. I think the hobby is excellent because it has a technical base, a social base. It's very good for CMS because a lot of senior gentlemen uh, are able to talk to each other and the group gets together every Saturday and we enjoy the company and build stuff. And at the moment we're doing a contest. So it's been, uh, it's been a good run. Um, for me, um, it's been sort of a hobby on the side for many years when I was in food business and doing some other things. So. Well, I first started out with uh, doing Morse code, which I still do. I'll be doing it today in a contest. And so I've kept that skill up a little bit. Uh, ham radio comes and goes depending on whether you're raising kids and you're doing other things. But uh, went along to working countries around the world and, and, and around the various states in the U.S. And came down here to Tassie and met one of the world's best hams in Moon Bounce, where you send a signal from your backyard up to the moon and you pick it up on the reflection and you can talk around the world. And that's a fellow named Rex Moncourt, VK7MO. And uh, he's what I consider to be uh, Olympic gold a level of, uh, of activities in this whole hot, crazy hobby. And I've helped him. I'm happy to say I've been able to help him. And so moon bounce is, uh, is exciting and challenging. Uh, there's a lot of digital stuff going on. So these days, a lot of young people are involved in ham radio because it supplements their computer skills. And that's really engaging because it gets them away from their little phone screens and gets them onto the radio. And then the radio gets them talking to people around the country. So that's kind of nice. It, it expands the technology and, and their presence. So uh, at the moment, I don't have very many big antennas. We live in a, in a modest but very nice house here in Tassie. 
but it's enough for me to get on Friday nights and Saturdays and basically just keep active. And there's a lot of uh, good talk, some of it not, <laughs> not, as, not as content rich as other talk may be, but it's a good time. And, uh, and meeting people who share your interests and uh, whatever. I have not, I, haven't, I don't have any band, uh, I don't have any uh, uh, badges for uh, woodworking or welding yet, but I'm working on that. I really would like to learn to weld. So uh, that's another thing that the Channel Med Shed is able to uh, provide me is a, is a menu of items that I can finally find, find the time and finally find the people to train me to, to do these things. Not that I'm going to build a bridge when I'm 81, but there are things I want to make. For the back. Which I see. What's this radio that Larry's playing with? Oh, no, Larry's around it. Yeah, you know, man, you know, what the end is it on? 10. 10 metres. 15. 15. Oh, it's, it's a tri band. <laughs> it's a tri band. It's a tri Don't you know nothing, Larry? <laughs> tri band. <laughs> it's a tri band. Okay, What's the um, 6 metre? Hi, my name's Gary and my call sign's VK7 Juliet Golf Delta. And I'm uh, like most amateurs, I guess, um, started out on CB radio. And when I was a kid, I Eventually, I originally got interested in just listening to old shortwave radios that my grandparents had, uh, so that was back in the AM days. So I sort of progressed from there to building crystal sets and uh, shortwave transistor radios, uh, shortwave ones that picked up overseas stations, and uh, working my way through to uh, sitting an amateur licence back in the days when it was a novice and so uh, that's sort of where I've worked myself at now and got an antenna farm at home. Um, nobody really likes it but nevertheless there's a house that looks like a porcupine and uh, lots of trees so we've got wires hanging all over the place and um, then I found out that the men's shed here was uh, wanting some help to get a station going so um, that's how we progressed pretty much to where we are now. We've got uh, half a dozen uh, amateurs in another room doing a contest and uh, there's quite a bit of interest in, uh, in the Margate area uh, for amateur radio. And there's been quite a few that have come out of the woodwork uh, since they've realised there's a station uh, operating here. So that's, uh, that's where we're at. So at the moment, um, we're just in the middle of a contest, which is the Remembrance Day contest, uh, which remembers the uh, fallen amateurs that were uh, in the Second World War and it's held every year so that's where we're at at the moment. Just a few Good afternoon I'm Tim VK7 TK which is my amateur call sign and I've joined the Channel Men's Shed here in Margate and uh, I've only been in it about three months mm. and um, I've been in Margate nearly ten years but I never got round to joining the men's shed until now and I had a computer problem and the man who fixed my computer was from the shed and he suggested I come down and have a look so I did and I didn't know there was an amateur radio group at the shed but um, being into amateur radio myself I thought oh yeah and uh, they seemed like a decent bunch of guys so I, um, I joined up and uh, we have a lot of fun we get together quite regularly. Um, Saturday morning is a big thing with us. We all get together and talk about amateur radio and we talk about everything just about. Um, and there's a lot of knowledgeable guys in the shed, um, interesting backgrounds and um, they've all got things to contribute and there's guys from America and guys from England and all over the place. and. Um, yeah, it's a very diverse uh, bunch of guys and we have a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm interested in old radios um, and as you probably know, radios used to be based on valves and uh, 
valves are now obsolete, but there is a, a group of people who still likes to use them. And uh, some people think they sound better. So the modern radios sound a bit tinny to some people, but the older radios with valves sound much different and it's a much warmer sound. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of people who are sort of, it's a bit nostalgic, I guess. Um, just like the old stuff, so uh, I've got about eight valve transceivers at home. Um, <laughs> not all of them work. <laughs> um, I haven't been that active in amateur radio the last few years. I did sort of get out of the hobby for a while, but now I've moved out here and joined the shed, I'm back into it. So um, I dug out a few of the radios and got back on air. So. I just got a clip. That's a bit out of whack. Yes. Oh, that's you, is that's it? That's the oscillator. You don't want to see our uh, finances. <laughs> so what's this? <laughs> and how long are they? They're only temporary, aren't they? How long will they be? I think it's on the left hand side. Yeah, okay. Put that onto something where it will make no noise. Ed Clark up north. Probably make no noise. If you make it the same, you'll probably feed mm -hmm. back on it. There's no 60. Um, well, my name's Chris. Um, I have got back into or got into the radios, uh, um, amateur radio, mainly because I've, I want to be able to travel. Uh, around Tasmania um, and travel around Australia, do more travelling around Australia and the original reason was so that I had a way of getting back out to the world when I'm in a remote spot. Uh, but then I, I went along to Reist and went to some meetings there, found that there was a really good community in with the amateur radio and the idea of sharing the experiences with the radios, doing all the different bands, working with all that sort of stuff is really appealing and working with the, the guys here and just getting really into the hobby uh, is, is quite exciting for me. It's a lot more than what I thought it was. Uh, I always, well, I've used radios all my life um, in, in my industry, but they've always just been standard commercial radios. And I never realized there was so much in amateur radio. Uh, so it's, it's really exciting to be getting into it. Uh, I've got my first radio actually from the, the men's shed. Um, I bought one of their secondhand radios uh, and I'm just in the process of getting all that set up at the moment with uh, antennas and I'm going to mount that in the vehicle. So it's a, it's a fair bit of work to do there and it's been good just getting all that going as well. Um, I don't have my call sign yet. I'm, I've passed my foundation license, but I'm still waiting for the ACMA to sort bits and pieces out and then I'll be able to use my call sign and be actually get on the air and start transmitting. Um, so at the moment I've not done any transmitting, but I'm getting the gear together, watching other people do it, learning the bits and pieces and then going from there. But no, it's really, really exciting to be doing it. It seems like a really great hobby to get into, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. going from, from strength to strength as far as um, the amateur radio is concerned and the electronics will, is coming back together too so there's things that um, we're going to be doing with that so uh, all in all it's uh, it's great and, and amateur radio is such a fantastic hobby especially where it fits with the doctrine of the, the men's shed movement we've got people involved in things and people communicating with one another isn't that great <laughs> We have, a, we have a little group that get together from home with VHF radios and they have a little chat, UHF radios I should say. They have a little chat with one another, which is great. Then we come and waste a lot of time at the shed. We have lots of projects we plan on doing. Don't always get around to doing them, but we have fun and we talk a lot, drink a lot of coffee 
And as far as I'm concerned, that's a, that's a good thing. That's what it's all about. So, uh, um, yep. As far as the, the rest of the men's shed uh, is concerned, I do, not enough. <laughs> I do. My wife now <laughs> tells people, I live at the men's shed. And I, I don't, I think she's totally wrong, but <laughs> um, she who must be obeyed says, yeah, you've got to... <laughs> so I'd love to spend more time here and there's so many things I want to do. We have, I should be wearing my badge, I don't. We have a little badge with coloured dots on it, stars and circles and things that determine what machine you're um, endorsed for because we don't want people cutting off limbs, fingers or whatever and people hate blood on the floor. <laughs> It's not a good thing at all. So we make sure that people are confident, competent, I should say, with machinery. So we sort of checked out with that. And there's still more little dots I've got to get, um, but it's great to have that equipment there. Virtually any project you want to start, we can do it here, and that's great. And if you've got trouble, there's another member here that'll bend over backwards to give you a hand. Isn't that great? <laughs> but, um, we've got the small engine department, um, where um, people work on their trimmers and lawn mowers and goodness knows what, under the supervision of Rex and he's great. Um, he hops in and does them, the most of it in any case. We've got our welding section and we've got some really good professional welders, um, Peter Norris, ENJ, um, that can do virtually anything and do little project, do little um, sessions to teach you how to, how to use it as well as give you a hand. If there's a project that's too complex and you don't want to tackle it, they're quite happy to hop in. Uh, Bruce McLeod, Bruce Weller, great woodworking people, um, will help you do any project you want. Um, so they don't do it all, but they'll certainly give you a hand and show you what to be, what's to be done. Even our radio bench that we've got up there, Bruce McLeod jumped in, he said, no problem, he said, I'll look after this. And he's a perfectionist, so we, we end up with a great product. <laughs> uh, yeah, great stuff. We've got, we've got a, a, a ham radio competition coming up, and it's called the RD Contest. And it's designed, it's a Remembrance Day conference, what the RD stands for, and it's designed to commemorate the radio amateurs that died during the war. Um, so it's, it's a mark of respect for them, and it also gives us a chance to uh, to try our skills out um, and the idea is within Australia, New Zealand and Papua New Guinea to make as many contacts on as many different bands as possible and all grabs points and it all goes towards the, the local team, the, the state as well so that's that's a great setup. We, we have a couple of radios here with uh, an assortment of antennas but we've got uh, some members especially Gary VK7JGD who has turned up with extra radios, extra antennas, lots and lots of cable, and we're putting together quite a team. And we've got about, um, I think, eight or nine members in total um, today for this competition as a team, um, and all they all take turns. Um, in the category we are, we've got um, a number of operators, but they can only operate one radio at a time. They can't have more than one radio um, transmitting. So we all take turns at that. Um, they can be different radios but only one radio at a time transmitting. So uh, we've got guys at the moment with microphone, uh, they'll hand it over, they'll do five or ten minutes, then they'll hand the microphone to the next guy. Um, someone else will be recording the, um, the contacts. Um, and we've got Larry who's a great CW operator um, and it gets extra points between the hours of one and six o'clock in the morning. So uh, he's gonna line himself up for that, and he'll be on the key, all to the point of getting extra, extra points for the, for the uh, competition. VK7 HSC, VK7 CMS.
SC, my number to you is 5904. Oscar, Oscar. VK7 Oscar, Oscar. This is VK7 CMS. Good afternoon. Our number to you is 59045. 045, thank you very much. Five number to you is QSL and good luck in the contest. CQ contest, CQ Perfect. contest. That last one was. CMS. The last one won't get any, won't get too much criticism from the. ZTA, this is CMS. My number to you is 045. Six, zero, five, six, over. Here we go. Mr. Kilo 5 Tango. VK5 Tango. So it's a fancy call sign. Yeah. 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 VK7 CMS. VK7 Charlie Mike Sierra 5917. Uh, QSL 5917, I'll give you 59245. Uh, sorry, correction, uh, 59045. Thank you, good luck with the QI5 Tango. Thank you.